Okay, what I'm going to do now is um, prepare my sensitizer um, that I'm going to coat onto my paper. So I need to mix this up. So the first thing I did was I took a, um, I'm mixing up a little bit of solution today because um, I'm going to be coating about four of these because I have those four sheets of paper. So I will be using my um, Bostic and Sullivan potassium dichromate 10% 10 so 10 solution. And what I've done is I've put a cap full in this bowl, okay, and then I put a cap full of the um, Bostic and Sullivan gum arabic solution, the 14 bomb. Uh, solution, which is their standard um, deluxe gum arabic solution that they prepare, and it's real handy that uh, Bostic and Sullivan makes these for you. I used to um, hand mix these by hand all the time for the photo classes and make large amounts, and um, you know it would take me a half a day to prepare these. So it's definitely worth um, being able to just buy these solutions um, that are pre-mixed and mix this up. Now, there's all kind of different formulas for this, um, and if you look at the textbooks, like I said, one of the things I'll be trying here uh, in the future is I ordered some containers to try uh, Christine Anderson's method, um, and she takes the whole gum printing process uh, to a level of rocket science, um, especially with mixing these. And this method I'm going to show you for the single color gum print is um, just a basic method that's uh, like talked about in the book Keepers of Light and also in the uh, first edition um, of the Robert Hirsch Alternative Processes book. Um, but it's just a basic standard solution that I'm making. So I put half and half, 50% uh, gum arabic, 50% uh, potassium dichromate in this bowl. And what I'm going to do now is for that much solution, again, there's two capfuls in there. I'm going to start with just about an inch of this uh, pigment right here. So it's coming out of that tube. And I'm just going to squeeze that out until I get about an inch on top of there. And then try to get it to come loose from the tube. There we go. And then I'll seal up my tube because these can become quite messy. And today's color, um, I can't really read that without my glasses, but it's, a, it's like a dark color that I want to use. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stir this now with this... Um, popsicle stick or this large art stick you get these sticks over in the um, art supply center uh, like an art store they're they're actually craft sticks so I buy them by a box so I think 500 but I use them for a lot of different things and I'm just going to stir this up keep stirring it you really want to make sure that you mix this good if you don't if you don't mix this good what's going to happen um, is you're going to get paint streaks on the uh, paper when you go to coat it. So I just want to go ahead and um, mix it really good. And some people actually at this point, they will take, and, um, take this solution and put it into a small container such as like this one, which is uh, an empty pill bottle, empty aspirin bottle. Um, that you had your aspirins and you know take the label off and you could actually label this then with a sharpie marker the type of pigment that you used um, you know when you mixed it and everything but the way that I'm doing it right here um, because I've added the potassium dichromate it's not really going to last that long so um, but you could put it in a bottle like this and then just shake it to really make sure that you um, you know get it into solution Another alternative would be your simple 35 millimeter film canister. Now the 35 millimeter film canister is also good for, you know, doing this. Now in the Christina Anderson's book, what she does is actually just mix her gum um, with the whole tube of paint. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if you if you look at the instructions in that book, and I'll be mixing that in the multicolored gum print the way she does it, is you actually will put um, gum arabic in a container and then add the whole tube of paint and um, mix it up with a some some brush or um, popsicle stick like that, and then just shake it also to make sure that you really suspend the gum into the um, into the solution. So once I've done that, what I want to do now is I want to just wet my brush down first. I'm using a brand new Hake brush here. And I try to use a Hake brush for um, every color. And then I'm just going to blot the Hake brush off, again with a paper towel, just to get most of that off of there. And now I'll take my sheet of paper um, and put my piece of paper down that I'm going to coat. And I'll just give this one more stir to make sure this is mixed up good. Put my piece of paper in here. You can see it. There we go. Okay. 
and I could draw the, the pencil lines on there, but I know this piece of paper, the size of it, so I'm just going to, um, you know, kind of wing it here, but I will get rid of this at this point. And I'll take my hake brush now, and I'm just going to dip this in the gum, and I'm actually going to use this to make sure that it's all mixed good, too, if you see the way I'm brushing this around. I really want to make sure that the solution is very uniform and that all the gum is dissolved or suspended into the um, gum arabic and potassium dichromate. And then I'll just brush my brush off here a little bit on the side and now I'm just going to come over here and pretty much coat this whole thing because um, this is going to be for a 4x5 negative for a single color gum print. And you see again, I, this is a new brush and I have a hair on there so I want to you know, try to get these hairs over the side so I could um, pull them off once I dry this and I'll just go back and forth a few times till I get a nice even solution and you're always going to see the brush marks with your gum Arabic um, so that's that's going to happen but they will not come out in the print area once you make the print so I want to make sure there's no I want to make sure there's no big puddles floating around here and at this point, then I can go ahead and dry this with my blow dryer. And again, I want to dry it with cool air. By using cool air, it'll, uh, it won't expose or won't start to heat up the stuff. If you heat it up, it actually hardens too much and it doesn't want to um, wash out when you go to wash it out. So I'll go ahead and put my blow dryer in here. So there my piece of paper, I can check it to make sure that it's dry. And now I can actually try to get these hairs off of here that came out of the brush. Um, one way is to simply to take a, um, another piece of paper. If you take another piece of paper, you can actually you know, do this and kind of, kind of get them off of there. But at this point now, we're ready to, um, we're gonna be ready to put this in the contact printing frame with the negative and expose it. So let's do that step next. Okay, here's a quick shot. I um, had the gum print dried and then I have my negative on top of this and now I'm getting ready to put this in my exposure unit. Now I could just take this out in the sun and, um, you know, give it a whirl at five minutes, um, you know, see if that works, maybe 10 minutes, um, but keep track of the time. And I can also check, this is somewhat of a printing out process so I can open the back on this contact printing frame and, um, you know, check the exposure on that. But um, what I'm going to do today is since it is kind of cloudy out and rainy is I'm going to actually um, put this in my LED light that I made uh, using the black LED lights and I'm going to give it an exposure of I think um, eight minutes and then we will see how that um, pans out. Okay this is a um, picture of the image after it's come out of the contact printing frame before it's been developed so I opened up the contact printing frame and took out the uh, piece of paper that's been exposed and then I have my negative down here so you can kind of see the negative and I just wanted you to see the latent image that's in here um, now you can you can kind of see the image and this is about the way it'll look when it's exposed and you're always going to see the paint still on here so you're kind of like looking um, at the image through the paint so the image is not super really distinct but you will have an image um, 
a ghost image that's available there for you to see. And this is before I develop it. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it in a tray of water. Um, that's approximately 70, 75 degrees and um, float it upside down. Now you don't want to use really cold water uh, because if you use really cold water, it'll um, harden the gum up in there and, um, and it won't want to develop. So you want it to be about 70, 75 degrees. Um, it could be even a little bit warmer, but you don't want to, again, use really hot water either because it'll make most of it wash off. And I'm going to put this in a tray upside down in water for 20 minutes. And here's a, um, a photo of the print floating upside down the correct way in the tray of water. And again, you don't want to agitate the tray. Um, when you first put it in there, I just give it a, a couple little agitations, you know, lifting the tray up at one end, uh, just to make sure that the, uh, the whole print underneath is um, covered with water and there are not no air bubbles on the print where it will not develop. And um, then I will just let this set for 20 minutes. Now after the 20 minutes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my um, uh, tong and pick up the print by one side and um, I'll set it down alongside the tray on top of a paper towel with the picture side up. So it's not, it's not picture side down, it's the picture side is up and I'm just going to pull this out real fast, um, lay this down on a paper towel and then dump that tray of chemicals out. And once I've dumped that tray of chemicals or that tray of water out, what I'm going to do is fill it again with fresh water and then put the print back down um, and leave it for another 20 minutes. And after I've done that, I'll do the same thing um, one more time. So it's three 20 minute baths floating upside down like this with um, virtually no agitation, just when you stick the print in a little bit um, and just leave it set there for 20 minutes. And you can go do other things at the same time. Um, just get a timer. You can use the timer on your stove, the timer on your watch, timer on your phone. Uh, set 20 minutes and just leave it set. Um, and so the total time on this development is going to be an hour. Um, some people develop them a little bit longer. Um, this is um, what I do and I think it works great. Now after the one hour, if the print still um, does not look to be developed correctly or it's, it's, it's really dark yet, um, it could be overexposed, it could be too much pigment. Um, so there's a couple of different things to look at, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to look at the evaluation process now um, of how this actually, you know, comes out. So this is um, our first results, and as you can see, this image is just beautiful. That's a joke, by the way. Um, so this this image is hasn't didn't come out very good, um, and this was an hour development time again, three 20 minute baths, and the time that I gave this print under my uh, UV exposure light was eight minutes. So the first thing I'm seeing with this, and I'm I'm actually seeing a couple things, but I'm just going to talk about the first thing I'm seeing. The first thing I'm seeing is the image doesn't want to wash out. So what that tells you is I've given it too much time. Um, so if you make a picture and it looks like this, and this will happen a lot when you're using the sun outside because the sun will want to expose these very quickly. So again, this was just eight minutes under my UV lamp. And here you can actually see the picture when it was being exposed under the UV lamp. Now these are just reflections of the lights, um, the black lights that are up above reflecting down on the glass, but um, it doesn't affect the print at all. It's just the print came out very well, but this was this print was just overexposed. So what we're going to do at this point is um, we're going to go back to the um, the drawing table and start again. So I'll coat up another piece of paper, and I'm again I'm using the same formula because I mixed enough of it to do a couple of these to actually do about four. Um, a cap full of each solution um, will give you about four, four by fives or an eight by ten um, when you're making this. So, so this is the second uh, print I made and I've exposed this one for six minutes. Now again I'm seeing two different things here um, and I will start to talk about the second thing that I'm seeing. Um, and the first thing I'm seeing is the exposure. This exposure still looks a little dark. So this was developed for three 20-minute uh, baths in 75-degree water floating upside down. So one hour. 
uh, 20 minutes and I changed the water, 20 minutes and I changed the water, and 20 minutes and I changed the water. And so this had a total of one hour. And uh, um, you can see the whites in the paper look very good, but the, the print is still kind of foggy and cloudy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the second thing that I'm seeing um, when evaluating a print. This is very important. When I'm looking at the color, um, the sepia color, um, it, it looks kind of muddy. It just doesn't look, you know, saturated. So I'm thinking that this particular batch had a little, um, not quite enough pigment. And that's something you got to um, do. And if in like reading Christine Anderson's book and reading other books like The Keepers of Light, um, when you're looking at um, gum printing, you have to evaluate like every pigment differently. So every pigment that you get um, is going to require a certain amount of um, pigment into the gum arabic so that you have a saturated um, a print and you have you have the gum saturated enough with the pigment so that it's going to make a, a print that produces a very rich print not a flat muddy print like this print is so this this was six minutes exposure so i'm saying it's it's a little it's a little dark it's a little too exposed and it also doesn't have um, quite enough saturation in the color, I think. I think the color's not, it, it's, it's muddy. It doesn't really look rich like I'd want it to look. So that means I should add more pigment. Now, before I do that, what I'm going to do is make one more print um, just to um, look at the time again, a little bit shorter time. And then I can actually see what my exposure is going to be with this um, particular um, light and with this particular negative and with the mixture of um, you know one to one gum arabic and potassium dichromate so a capful of gum arabic and a capful of potassium dichromate and then this particular had it like about an inch of um, the sepia pigment in it so i would if i was going to go mix some more of this i would mix it a little bit darker add a little bit more pigment to it in this case but before we do that let's make one more print with the same mixture and um, look at shortening the time. So this print was six minutes. Um, the first print that I made was eight minutes long. Um, and then the next one I'm going to make is going to be four minutes. Okay, so I went ahead and made the print at four minutes. And then I gave it an hour wash, uh, three 20-minute baths. And this is what we have. So this looks to me like about the right exposure. <clears throat> I still don't have the saturation in the pigment that I was talking about. And I think the colors kind of blah. Uh, this was just the straight sepia out of the tube. So what we're going to do um, is I'm, I'm going to mix up a new batch of chemistry or a new batch of chemistry and um, add some more pigment and um, see where we go from there. And we'll be sticking with this four minute exposure because the exposure is based on the light that you're using. Um, it's based on the um, sat or the the mixture of the gum arabic and the potassium dichromate. So the negative is going to be the same, the light is going to be the same. That's important that you understand that, and then that the um, the mixture is the same too. So I have a one to one solution, one part gum arabic and one part potassium dichromate, and then the pigment is going to change this by adding different pigments. You're going to get the different tones in here. So here's just a quick shot of all three images together to you that you can look at that shows that the uh, the first print up here that was I exposed it for eight minutes. This print down here I exposed it for six minutes and then uh, this print right here the one that I think is the right exposure was exposed for four minutes. Now this works really good um, in, in calculating your time when I'm making a print when I'm using an exposure unit like the one I made. Now when using the sun um, you're okay in the middle of the day when the sun is and you don't have clouds and the sun is steady so the light is the same um, but if you have a cloudy day where the clouds are moving in and out and your light is always changing it's really hard to do this type of printing because or any alternative process printing um, because you might base your exposure the first print you make and the sun might be out and then when you go take the um, contact printing frame back out again there might it might be cloudy so on the days that you print, if you're using the sun, 
um, you want to make sure that the light is fairly steady and you can actually check that with your camera in a gray card like take a reading what the gray card says um, and when you and then when you come back out to make the next print um, you can check and see if it's the same and you want it to be around the same and if it's not you can maybe kind of base your exposure on what it is and hopefully your exposure will be over by the time it changes again but um, so that's one of the, the ringers that um, gets thrown in when you're printing with the sun but again with gum printing these exposures are so short um, you know four minutes is my my print that you can um, you know actually you know kind of get good results if you're as long as you're timing everything and controlling it now you also want to have like a box or something when you when you set up if you're printing in the sun when you set a print down in the sun um, you've got to remember if you pick your contact print up outside and you're carrying that contact printing frame back into the um, into the house or your lab wherever you're printing at you're also getting sun you know on the contact printing frame then when you're carrying it in so that has to count as part of your exposure time unless you like can stick your whole contact printing frame um, in a, a, a plastic bag that light will not go through or a cloth bag um, you know cover it up with a blanket um, put it in a cardboard box as soon as the printing time is over so if you have a cardboard box sitting on the table and you set this down on a table and expose it then you could put the contact printing frame directly into the cardboard box as soon as the time is up so that you don't get any more time because again the time is critical you have to like time these um and you have to make you know tests like this in order to come up with really good prints. I've had students try to turn in prints like this top one before, and they go, oh, "That's the way it came out." Um, well, it's really not. They just didn't put no effort into it. So I mean, I, I show you right here that you can go from this to this to this. So um, it's all a question of um, you know figuring things out and and getting it right. Now we're going to show you how to even make it better by adding a little bit more pigment to the um, mixture when I make it. So I really didn't like that sepia color all that much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little um, Rouge Carmen to the um, mixture, which is a um, red pigment. And this pigment was originally made uh, from insects. And now it's been um, manufactured uh, for the most part synthetically. So they're, they're making this... Um, synthetically without the use of insects but um, these are french watercolors so you know they i don't know what they're made from i guess i'd have to look on the back and and see but if there's really any insects in this but we can um also you know google the color sometime and it's it's interesting to find out a lot about the colors that you're uh, printing on So I actually Googled that color and uh, pulled this up and you see it was made, um, uh, it's extracted from the dried bodies of certain female scale insects native to tropical and subtropical America. And as you can see right here, it was used extensively for watercolors um, and now it's made used being made by synthetic methods. But you know, you might still find some out there uh, made the old way. So what I'm doing here is um, I wanted to show you approximate amount of the pigments that I'm putting in there. And again, there's other methods. And when we go to the, um, the multiple color gum, I ordered some plastic bottles so I can, um, you know, mix the saturated gum arabic solutions with pigments and then dilute from there. But I just wanted to show you here. And what I did is I made a double batch. So... Um, this only has um, gum arabic in it right now. It does, didn't have the potassium dichromate yet, but um, I put two capfuls of gum arabic in here, and then I added about two inches of the brown pigment and about one inch of the um, the carmen, so the, or the red. So we want to see what this will do, and I'm going to go ahead and mix this up then, and this will be the method. Since since I added two um, capfuls of gum. I will add two capfuls of potassium dichromate to this to make the uh, working strength solution that I'm going to brush on. So I'll just put the, what I'll actually do is first mix this um, paint, the, the watercolor pigment in with the gum. I'll stir this really good with the uh, popsicle stick. And once it's been stirred really good, then I'm going to add two capfuls of potassium dichromate, stir that, and then um, go ahead and use that for coating my paper this time. 
so I went ahead and exposed it for four minutes um, with the new mixture and I um, you know gave it an hour development three 20 minute baths of water 75 degrees and this is the print that I came up with and um, I like it quite a bit I, I really like the difference in the color and the exposure is good I think the saturation is good so this is basically what you're looking for in a um, you know in a one color um, gum print now there is a little modeling or something going on up here in some of the areas and um, I think that just happens to do with the um, the paper that we're using the Hannah Meal um, platinum paper so um, I'm going to try you know printing on some other different papers too but again this was done without any sizing um, I actually did a test too when I was um, you know waiting for some of this by putting some different sizing on this paper and one of the things I found out is that um, the Hannah Meal Platinum Rag I used spray sizing and then I used some gesso for two of the um, experiments that I was working on and I found out that the the sizing doesn't work that great on the Hannah Meal because it's probably already has a sizing on it so um, I wouldn't bother um, sizing this particular paper, but when we get to some Artisto Fabriano and, um, you know, Reeves BFK in particular, you might want to try some different sizing experiments, too, to see which sizing, you know, might work best best for you, whether you're using gesso or using spray sizing or using the uh, Knox gelatin method of sizing your prints. But So let me show you also... Um, right now this in comparison to the original print that I made that was done at four minutes that um, just had the sepia color uh, brown in it so here's both prints that um, we can look at and evaluate so the top print was again the first one that I made where um, I, I figured out the exposure time with the dilutions that I was using and again, you could see that I really didn't care for the pigment color or the color of the, uh, the sepia. It was I didn't put enough pigment in that. And I could have stuck with just that color um, sepia. If I liked that color, I would just have to add a little bit more pigment, maybe another half inch of uh, pigment to that one-to-one -one mixture, and that would make more of a saturated solution. Um, and again, the bottom one is where I've actually took two colors and combined them together to come up with this like, nice rich reddish brown. Um, or reddish sepia if you wanted to call it that but um, I really like the bottom print better and um, that's how you make a gum print so hopefully you'll go out and have some successful um, printing and you know think of it as fun it's a lot of fun it, it is a lot of work but um, again you can do other things too when you're um, you know waiting on these prints to wash every 20 minutes you don't have to stand there and watch it in the tray you just put the print upside down in the tray and let it set for 20 minutes um, and uh, that that will be it and have a good time and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up uh, subscribe to my channel and we'll be looking at multicolor gum printing next thank you